This is the Rabbit R1, and it's been out for a little under a year, and I wanted to take the time in this holiday season to cover a couple of details that I think might make this the most interesting device that came out this year. Now, when the Rabbit R1 was launched, it was basically sold as this can-do-all device, the replacement to everything you have, uh, this playful little answer to the phone and to language models and to AI. It is the AI interface to everything. And in some ways, it actually is. And in every other way, it's basically not. It's really a difficult thing to nail down because it answers a lot of questions that we have around AI devices, but at the same time, doesn't necessarily solve problems and has kind of become like this plaything, which in some ways it was sort of designed to be, but in the other way, uh, maybe it wasn't as much. Some of the ad campaigns talked about how it could lead to maybe uh, more productivity or solve problems around open-ended questions that you might ask a computer. And again, in some ways it can do that, but does it deliver on it in a way that actually ends up being satisfactory to people? Maybe not so much. Now, I do want to preface this and say this is not meant to be a full review. This is mostly my take on the state of this device as is right now. I'm a little under the weather and the holidays are coming up. I have a handful of other devices that I was planning on talking about, but given that I don't think this device deserves a full review right now, I think this might be something that is worth touching on. So the short of it is that the Rabbit R1 is a language model that has access to many tools. As a matter of fact, it has access to almost any tool. You can use Teach Mode, which is uh, a website you can go to. You open up a web browser and you can teach it to do things. It's still in like a playground phase. They're testing it out, but you could teach it how to use Amazon. And then you can ask it to buy something on Amazon. It would go do that for you. And it's all sort of at your own risk. And it's basically just using like an AI web scraper type tool, but it does technically work and deliver on that. It also functions just as a normal device. So I can ask it a language model-like question and get a response. It's also using perplexity, so it can deliver reasonably reliable answers. I wouldn't, you know, really rely on it because I get unreliable answers from perplexity all the time, but I can ask it something very open-ended, like at the end of the movie with that person who swings on vines, what were the last words in the script? Searching for last words in the script of the movie, Tarzan. And it will actually go and do that task. It can search for that and deliver results. And it figured out that I was talking about Tarzan, not just the man swinging on the vines. Preparing to search for the final lines of the Tarzan movie transcript by entering the URL into Google's search bar. And it's multi-step. So you see here, perplexity maybe didn't work. It's doubling down and performing this task in a web browser. So somewhere right now, this prompt is actually being typed into Google and it's going to search it. It's going to summarize those results and bring it back to me. This is real time. It takes very long. This is actually one of the- So this is one of the things that I end up experiencing most of the time with this device. Very cool, very slow, so underwhelming. It doesn't actually uh, lead to a satisfying result because most of the time, Tarzan movie transcript to find the final lines of dialogue and sound effects. Most of the time I'm waiting on just some voice response that the last words in the script of the movie Tarzan from 1999 are a sound effect description indicating that a horn is blaring. This marks the closing of the movie. And now it's done. That's it. Okay, so it did answer, but was that satisfactory? It did the work for me, but it took so long, it narrated its own steps out loud to me the entire time. And that is just a very tiring experience. Now, if I asked a more open-ended question, like, when was the movie Tarzan released? It's going to be a little faster. Searching for Tarzan, 1999 movie release date. Movie Tarzan was released in the United States on June 18th, 1999. So depending on the complexity of the prompt, they are basically deciding, this AI model is deciding which function to call on. 
I'm going to bet they're probably using Langchain on the back end. They're calling out a handful of different functions. Everything's just plugged in on the back end. This is a really fun project, and I think that they have delivered an, a very interesting experience in an attractive package. It is really a curious device. I think they've done a great job at that. Even today, they just pushed out an update. And of course, in order to be aware of the updates, you really have to follow along closely. So for the most part, I have to follow along on Discord and on Twitter. But they released this collection thing, so I now have the ability to customize the avatar I have. I kind of like the, the scarf version here. It's a lot of fun. The Rabbit team is actually very receptive to feedback. In Discord and on Twitter, they actively listen to what users are saying, and they're making changes as they go uh, rapidly. There are over-the-air software updates that happen all the time, which is actually a note of contention. If I don't turn this on for a while, when I plug in the device, it has to do every single software update in a row, which sometimes means I have to wait 30 minutes for this device to be usable just because it's collecting its updates. But at the end of the day, I think there are some software improvements that can make this device usable and not annoying, because right now it's kind of annoying to use. I, I kind of avoid it. The things that really hold me up are the fact that I can't use this as a text-only device. I really have to be listening for it because everything here is ephemeral. So if there is a message that is scrolling across the screen and then it disappears, it's gone. I can't scroll back and see it. But that means I need to use the audio. The problem is, is the audio is slow. It's slow and really annoying. I can't customize the voice. I can't change the way it sounds. I can't speed it up. It's just droning on and on and on. And this type of voice just drills into your brain. You have to sit there and listen to all of the LLM slop being narrated by this droning voice. And I think this is the thing that actually keeps me from using it. There are very few times where I want to ask a question to this device, get a long, slow response. Um, most of the time, I'm looking for something quick with uh, high density. And most of the time, I get something that's slow with low density. And that is uh, really dissatisfying. No matter how useful this device is, if the presentation tends to be so dissatisfying, I end up shying away from it. So that is my half-baked, I don't know, pseudo-review for a half-baked device, at least at this point in time. And I, I'm not saying that in a bad way. This device, I really do think, is half-baked. They rushed it out the door, they got some hardware, they got some software, they shipped it, a lot of people were dissatisfied, and they are making improvements. I'm actually impressed with the progress that they've made. I like the team, I like the device. Teenage Engineering's design, I mean, come on, this thing is fun. It just needs some work. And there's really nothing that can't be fixed here with software, as far as I'm concerned. I just want to see it improve because I really want to make use of it. In my opinion, it's worth it if you get the Perplexity Pro plan that's included with the purchase. I don't know if that's still available, but when I bought the device, I got $200 free of perplex Perplexity, so I ended up getting it for uh, one year free. And that basically is something that I might have purchased on my own anyway. So now I have unlimited perplexity, and I also have this device, even though I might have ended up purchasing both. So in some ways, I feel like I got this for free. That's, I guess, <laughs> I guess that's a niche hobbyist device math for you right there. If you're looking for a fun device to play with, if you're looking to experiment with language models and you're looking to teach some sort of system on a computer how to function just based on what you're saying, you could have a lot of fun with this. You could definitely build a tool that does some sort of multi-step automation. You could ask it to file documents for it or check emails. Uh, really, the sky's the limit. It's just going to be slow and it's going to narrate every step. And that seems like a very short-term problem, but it is still the problem that I'm dealing with today. Until I don't have to deal with those types of problems, this device will just collect dust on my shelf. Because every time I turn it on, I have to listen to the same annoying voice, speak at the same slow pace, narrate every single one of its steps. It's just tiring. Such a fun device with such a sluggish experience is very confusing. I hope Rabbit figures out their place. I hope they end up optimizing this device and make it something that is quick and accessible and fun to use. The device screams fun. The user experience screams, whew, I'm here, I'm putting up with this. And that's the Rabbit R1. The future is here. 
it is improving, but it's slow and speaks to you like the most bored professor that you've ever listened to. Thanks for watching. Happy holidays. I'll see you in the new year.